Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Gail Biquet. I'm the director of the ISC International Center. And I'm with uh, Thomas Padilla from Internet Archive. And we are going uh, to talk about uh, multi-custodial approaches to uh, digital preservation of scholarship. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting us uh, to talk uh, on this subject. And uh, I remember I was uh, here at CNI four years ago, uh, talking about the uh, also talking about uh, Keepers Registry. So the idea today is to provide you with an update. And uh, uh, Clifford Lynch um, has served on the technical advisory committee for Keepers Registry, and he has been a he has always been a great supporter of, uh, of this uh, project. Um, so here is the outline um, of my presentation. As I've just said, um, I want to give you an update on Keepers Registry. Uh, also a quick overview of a service that we've just implemented, which is uh, called uh, Submit, Retrieve, Reuse. And um, touch upon um, the policy for the development of Keepers Registry starting 2025. Um, so just uh, um, to start with, uh, I would like to do a, give you a brief introduction of Keepers Registry. It was created uh, and, and set up at the University of Edinburgh uh, by Edina. Uh, and in 2019, actually, um, the ISSA International Center took over the service from uh, Edina as JISC was stopping uh, funding to, to the service. And the ISSA International Center had been involved uh, right from the start uh, with, with, the, with the project. So this is the reason why there was, a, 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 let's say, a, a natural shift of responsibility between uh, the University of Edinburgh and the ISSA International Center. So we work uh, with keepers, uh, with the preservation agencies, uh, was list you see on, on, on the screen. Um, and uh, since 2019, and since we uh, took over the service, we've been uh, eager or eagerly working on the development uh, of um, uh, the service by actually involving more agencies. So um, nowadays, uh, we have uh, at the moment 14 active uh, preservation agencies uh, working with us and three inactive preservation agencies. Um, uh, these agencies are Archaeological Data Service, the British Library, and the Swiss National Library. So we hope that at one point they may re review their decision and, and come back and work with us. Um, but uh, of, for, we are fortunate to work with uh, 14 other agencies and um, uh, with the ISSN as a linchpin to match data between um, these archiving agencies and the ISSN uh, database. Uh, we know that at the moment there are a bit more than 80, 88,000 titles which are preserved and uh, a bit more than 21,000 titles uh, of serials uh, which are preserved at least by three agencies, uh, which is to say uh, one quarter of preserved titles are actually held by more than three agencies. We've just um, included data from the National Library of Spain. Uh, it, it has just been added, but we have not yet communicated on, on, on this new inclusion. And we also work with TIB in Germany, the Leibniz Information Center for Science and Technology. Um, and they are currently updating or upgrading their data uh, to be able to share it with us. And as I've said before, we've developed a new service. I will come to that in a moment. We've also um, added uh, um, a handful of statistics uh, about um, the collections which are preserved and uh, um, uh, these statistics allow users to uh, compare um, between the agencies and to know um, uh, the amount of preserved titles that they each handle. As you can see here, Portico is the um, um, well, actually, holds the, the most titles. Uh, pre well, they preserve the most titles in uh, in their archive, and then comes uh, clocks, uh, locks, and um, I think scholars' portal. So, of course, these statistics evolve with time. Uh, 
we have a MOU with each archiving agency uh, that uh, actually defines the frequency with which they uh, update their data. And of course, Internet Archive is also uh, a partner, so this is the reason why we are both here to, to talk about uh, um, uh, preservation, digital preservation. Um, these statistics are also interesting because they show you um, uh, how unique some titles are, and uh, among the 88,000 uh, titles which are preserved, actually a bit more than 55,000 are held only by one agency. Um, and so this means that uh, what we call the keep safe ratio is still to be improved uh, because this ratio was uh, devised, you know, right from the start, I think, of the project, um, stating that uh, to, um, to, to be assured that, you know, the titles, I mean, the, the resources will be um, kept for, on, for the long term, it would be safe uh, to have them um, archived by more than three uh, agencies. So as you can see, there is uh, here some uh, um, progress to be, to be made. Uh, we also have developed a, a, a coverage overlap chart. Uh, you can see here on this one, uh, I think the overlap between uh, uh, LOX, CLOX and PORTICO but you can move um, the, the, the arrow on, on the statistics on the page, on the portal page, and see um, what are the overlaps between other agencies. And here, um, this is more recent, we have developed um, um, some statistics on the national sovereignty over the preservation of journals. And here you have the example of uh, France, uh, as you can see, um, Gallica, which is the, the um, archiving system or uh, the depot for the archive of the National Library of France, actually holds more than 96% uh, uh, of all titles, French titles, uh, which are uh, um, recorded in the ISN database. But these figures are a bit different when you look at uh, Netherlands, as you can see here, um, the preservation of titles published uh, in the Netherlands is, uh, um, is much more balanced uh, since um, CLOCK's eDepot, which is the archive of uh, the, National Library, uh, the Royal Library of the Netherlands, uh, but also Internet Archive, the Library of Congress, LOX, um, and also Portico, actually hold in their archives a lot of titles which are published in the Netherlands. Um, coming to the UK and the US, uh, we have the same situation here, that the preservation of uh, these titles is also well shared uh, among um, the keepers. Um, another interesting statistic is um, the, the preservation of open access resources. The ISS International Center has developed a, a directory of open access resources. And as you can see here on, 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 on the screen, um, for France, uh, there are a bit more than 4,000 titles which are um, listed in road. And according to the statistics, only 145 are, are actually archived. Um, the situation is a bit better for the UK and the US. Um, uh, as you can see, um, there are two, a bit more than 2,000 uh, open access journals listed in, in the ISN portal, out of which uh, a bit more than 1,500 are actually preserved by uh, keepers. So uh, I want now to switch to uh, a service that we've developed, which is called Submit, Retrieve, Reuse. Um, the idea or the rationale for developing this service was to allow uh, libraries, publishers, or any um, content provider to be able to check the validity of the ISSN in their catalog, update uh, the ISSN and the metadata, retrieve keepers' registry data in bulk, uh, because that's of interest you know, to uh, uh, libraries to know about, you know, the preservation of these, uh, of these resources. And uh, the ultimate goal being, of course, to make room for uh, in, in the 3D and the digital storage facilities based on information retrieved from Keeper's Registry. 
Um, you have here a, a, um, a screenshot of um, the metadata which is held in the ISIN database and here more specifically information about um, the archival status. And this is what uh, you retrieve by uploading a list of ISSN. Um, you retrieve information on the validity of these uh, identifiers, but also uh, data about uh, the title, whether it's print or digital, and uh, as well as detailed metadata, and uh, also information coming from uh, indexing services and from the agencies participating in Keeper's Registry. So what's next for uh, Keeper's Registry? Uh, we are currently devising a, a, a policy for the development of the service. We would like to increase the, the interest ratio, uh, of course, by increasing the number of keepers, but also by dis diversif diversifying sorry, um, the, the agencies so that we can cover some titles from other parts of the world, because for the time being, as you were able to see, our main focus is on uh, North America, Europe, uh, a bit of South, uh, South America. But we, we, we would like to work, for example, with Indonesia, because we know they, are, they publish a lot of, uh, of journals. Uh, also Australia, Canada, Finland, Denmark, and Turkey. These were the, the, the countries which were actually identified through this uh, research that we are currently leading. Also contact publishers in countries with low ingest ratio um, to um, encourage them to work with archiving agencies and uh, choose from the keepers or other agencies that uh, may do the job for them. Um, another, another objective is to engage with libraries that select open access titles where such archiving because that's, uh, it's always tricky to actually um, identify or, or know about these titles and whether they are uh, worth being ingested. So that's, uh, I think that's something we, we could do with uh, the contributions of, uh, of, of libraries around the world. Develop a metric to monitor coverage for each archive title for the time being, but that's an issue that uh, is addressed by, uh, uh, I suppose, a lot of you um, uh, and, and libraries in general, is that we have heterogeneous uh, holdings uh, descriptions and we need to tackle this issue by trying to streamline or uh, rework uh, these holdings so that we can compare actually um, the, between you know, the, 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 all the ar archiving agencies, what are the gaps and find the gaps uh, where, wherever they are. And also another uh, objective would be to achieve formal registration with UNESCO Memory of the World Program and, and to achieve this, we will need, of course, some uh, support from the archiving agencies uh, which contribute to the service. Thank you for your attention. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I am not Jefferson Bailey. I am, <laughs> surprise, uh, uh, I am Thomas Padilla. Uh, so Jefferson couldn't make it. I'm, I'm here to pitch hit today. I'm gonna do my best uh, Jeffersonian version of this presentation. Um, so gonna talk a lot about a project that we work on at the Internet Archive called Internet Archive Scholar, um, but of course trying to make the larger point about the um, relative to the title of this uh, session, right? That multi-custodialism is needed to preserve uh, open scholarship. So uh, our work on Internet Archive Scholar very much in alignment with our general mission at the Internet Archive, which is to provide universal access to all knowledge. Um, in terms of preservation and access uh, strategies that we have at work at the Internet Archive to preserve scholarship, um, they are various. Uh, we have publishers and authors uh, self-deposit through archive.org. We have publisher and author donations. We have ongoing uh, large-scale digitization of material in various formats. And then we have the targeted born digital collection strategy through um, IA Scholar. Access approaches, similarly, 
various public access to content through archive.org, participation in interlibrary loan, and again, IA Scholar as an access sort of portal, aggregation point, et cetera, um, for open scholarship. Uh, this is an example of a kind of preservation of scholarship that we do at the Internet Archive. What you see on the left is a picture of what we refer to locally as the SIM collection or the serials in microfilm. Large-scale digitization project, 14,000 titles, 480,000 volume years, and about 500 million pages. Um, ongoing, increasingly made accessible. High-level goals for IA Scholar. Um, as we try to do with most of our services, we seek to leverage the um, open infrastructure that we have on hand and our large-scale web archiving program to um, provide better access to scholarship. Um, part of the way that we do that is by trying to integrate additional um, automation within our broader automation workflows for web archiving globally at scale. So we kind of just nest within there another workflow to try and capture and archive open scholarship as it proliferates across the internet. We develop various tools to identify these scholarly objects in web harvests and archives and <clears throat> work to uh, improve and augment the metadata, often through integrations and partnerships in the broader uh, community. Four main preservation strategies that we have, of course, automated daily archiving, uh, making use of persistent identifier sources, periodic archiving in targeted web crawls, and some IDing and extracting content from past generic web crawls, and then again, um, partnerships and integrations, which I'll mention um, in a few slides, a few examples in that vein. In terms of distinguishing um, how we approach this work, we do it in two ways. Uh, we have sort of a, a top-down or known work approach, and then we also have a bottom-up or unknown work approach. We mostly tend toward the top-down and known work approach where we're seeking to harvest and archive uh, PIDs, registries, metadata manifests, and so forth. Um, in terms of bottom-up unknown work, that entails you know, often applying um, some machine learning strategies to the general web archive collection. Uh, there are many billions of PDFs in, in this um, archive, um, so we tend to do that um, on a semi-regular basis. It can be quite expensive on the compute side. Um, many, many millions of outputs preserved, uh, including data sets in IA Scholar, about 35 million OA papers with open full text um, data sets. We also maintain a scholarly citation graph called RefCat, which is also openly accessible uh, online. Um, and in terms of acquisition, we're at about 30,000 uh, new objects a day via PIDs, Archive, PubMed, and so forth. Roughly 5 million new objects per year um, end up in IA Scholar via the targeted and general web harvesting that the larger internet archive operations um, are engaged with. This is a depiction of a workflow for PDF processing from some of the general collections to identify unidentified works, making use of a series of open source software uh, called PDF Trio, Grobit, and Fuzzy Cat. Um, helps us to service things, um, surface things that um, are otherwise not identified and are perhaps not preserved in some cases. Um, everything that I'm talking about, or I think, yeah, pretty much everything I'm talking about can be accessed at IA Scholar now. It, it is available, it is live, it has been live for some time. Um, the URL is kind of nested there in the slide. It's scholar.archive.org. Encourage you to take a look. Um, Internet Archive Scholar also interacts with various interlibrary loan platforms. Um, we provide access to the aggregate metadata sources, databases, and data at archive.org um, in a collection called Bulk Bibliographic Metadata. Quite descriptive. It's all there. Take a look. Um, in terms of sort of values of Internet Archive, Scholar um, various depending upon um, your position uh, in the field. Um, not to read all of these, I'll just maybe maybe just one from each. So we think with you know for journals that uh, Internet Archive Scholar 
provide some value in being able to just sort of relatively automatically archiving open access pubs um, through our web harvests. Um, for institutions, um, a storage preservation and indexing service. And for researchers, um, uh, essentially research data, uh, particularly for folks working in meta science. Many partnerships and integrations make this possible. A um, couple of examples, or before examples, uh, a note about multi-custodial strategies. Um, you know, kind of like I was saying at the very beginning, uh, this doesn't really become possible without many partnerships and integrations. Um, fairly fragile space, and so we're trying to seek as many partnerships and integrations as we can and reinforce the rest of the community where we can. So in line with that, I'm gonna mention a couple of examples. Um, Internet Archive has joined the Keeper's Registry of Preservation Organizations. We do reports two times a year of you know, everything that we have committed to preserving. We have a partnership with Google Scholar where 30 million of the OA works in IA Scholar uh, are now indexed and available through Google Scholar. Um, and we also work with Semantic Scholar. We have an additional integration with the Center for Open Science, where basically anything that goes up on Center for Open Science in the research registries is automatically archived um, at archive.org. Um, currently focused on the research registrations, about 100,000 archived, but we're scoping to include inclusion of additional um, OSF areas. We are also participating in Jasper, which is a multi-institutional effort to provide digital preservation services to OA nonprofit journals in DOAJ. Currently, 100 plus deposits from 30 journals are preserved through that collaboration. Partners at DOAJ, Clocks, Public Knowledge Project, and Keepers, slash ISSN. And uh, finally, my last bit here in this whirlwind tour, uh, we're in the pilot stage of working with Core and Crossref and DataSight to look at hosting mirrors of content and services, um, such as databases, APIs, search indexes, and so forth. And a, a last bit, we're also exploring the potential value of um, selfless deposit, which would basically be a service where we would provide universities mirrors of scholarship from their faculty that we find and put in an IA scholar but are not necessarily deposited by faculty into their local IR. Selfless deposit. So that's it uh, for me and this wolf. Um, <laughs> uh, credit, of course, to uh, Jefferson and uh, colleagues Martin, Nate, Alex, and Monica, and also colleagues David and Vicky, and thanks to our past funders who have brought us to this point, the Mellon Foundation and IMLS. Thank you so much. I think we have time for questions. Do you want to pick who goes first? Yeah, or? who's your favorite child? <laughs> uh, yes, mean. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Uh, this question is for Thomas. I see that Internet Scholar is on, in beta, and I was wondering what the threshold is going to be for IA to take it out of beta. That that's a great question. I um, so I guess I I have been advised to not answer questions I don't know the answer to by Jefferson. So that's I guess that's a, I would suggest following up with Jefferson. So my question, um, kind of for both of you, um, I think the point about so few journals being or many of the journals only being kept by one keeper is I think important. And but it follows along to the second point you were making too, right? That um, we don't really know the completeness of these um, because the data is at the title level. And so I was just curious for either of your, particularly with e-journals, it's hard to even know what the unit is. It, it, there used to be a bound volume that came in the mail and if you kept all those, you had it, but like issues aren't even really the unit by which materials are distributed. And so I'm just curious if either of you are working on or thinking about ways to sort of track or measure completeness or how you might kind of pick at some of that. Um, 
Thank you, Trevor. Um, well, actually, um, that's what I was uh, explaining um, in, in my presentation. We are aware of these, uh, of these flows, let's say, in, 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 the, in, in the data that we can retrieve from, from the agencies. And um, there, there has been a, a development, and maybe you're, you, you've heard about that, in, um, in Brazil uh, by EBICT. Um, they've, um, they've implemented or just launched a, a project called Pinakes. And um, they, so it's about the preservation of, um, of uh, journals. And they've been able to tackle the issue of uh, heterogeneous um, holdings descriptions. Um, so we need to get in touch with them and, and, and see how technically they've been able to achieve that. And recently, a, a colleague of um, mine from the uh, Agence Bibliographique de l'Enseignement Supérieur, so the, the agency uh, which actually coordinates academic libraries in, in France, uh, has sent me a, a information regarding uh, PyMark, or, uh, um, um, so that uh, also a development or a program that can uh, address this type of uh, Issues. So I think there there is some progress done, uh, and uh, I hope we can find a solution by investigating further. Hi, I've got a question for Thomas. I was really intrigued by the um, ref graph citation. Um, you know, one of the the constant hurdles we have with OA publications is trying to show the value to faculty to publish there instead of publishing commercial journals. And is the Internet Archive thinking about um, using that information to kind of advance um, research impact metrics for, for that corpus of work? Thanks. It's a good question. I, I think that, um, you know, certainly, uh, RefCat itself seems like a, a good research object or research data set for researchers that may want to pursue that question. Um, and certainly we provide open access to it in, in that spirit. Well, if there are no other questions, we thank you for your time. Thank you.